one through seven really dealt with um, dealing uh, with how to deal with uh, judging and that we are not to judge. And now we're going to look at this next part, which deals about uh, partiality, not being partial to someone. Uh, in the first part of the chapter, it talked about uh, treating a person who is rich different than treating a person who is poor. And unfortunately, in our societies, we see this happen all too often. So let's go to the first verse. It says, if anyone, if, however, you fulfill the royal law according to the scripture, you shall love your neighbor as yourself, you do well. Now, why is this called the royal law? It's referring to Leviticus chapter 19, verse 18, where it says, you are not to take vengeance nor bear any grudge against the children of your people, but you shall love your neighbor as yourself. This is one of the most quoted scriptures. You know, it's interesting when you hear people talk about the word of God and unfortunately some say, oh, you know, we're, we're, we're done with all the commandments. We don't have to keep them anymore. But the top ten, oh no, those we keep, right? Those we might keep. And I ask them, well, what's the greatest commandment? And what does everyone say? Love the Lord with all your heart, soul, and might, right? And love your neighbor as yourself. That is the second of all the greatest commandments. And I said, and which of the ten is that? And silence goes throughout. Because Yeshua even himself quoted this scripture and it's not one of the top ten. Now, we all know that the, the Ten Commandments are really the main categories, and all the other 603 fall under those ten. And that's how we're supposed to look at it. Now, some of you are going, wait, Rabbi, there's 613. There's ten of them that I just mentioned, and the other 603 go into it. Some of you have already done the math and figured out I was right. <laughs> Others will get there in a couple minutes. But what we have to understand is God has not changed. And these are his words. You know, I, I joke around. I used to say I, have a, I had an aunt, and she wrote her own Bible. It was her Bible. didn't matter what God's word said. It mattered what she said. And unfortunately, there's a lot of Bibles out there like that. The people have their own interpretation of what the word of God says, but God himself is the one who wrote it. He's the only one that can change it, right? So we have to understand what God is calling us to do. And, and we have to be able to embrace this idea of God's love. The, it, it really encompasses the whole kingdom when we talk about this and we see that God himself uh, is the reinforcer, uh, reinforcer the, through his son and, embraces, you know, and it embraces or encompasses all the other laws. Uh, I, I'll never forget, I once read about a, a story of, a, of a, a Gentile man who wanted to become Jewish. But he wanted to do it right away. He wanted to know everything there is right now. And so there was two rabbis in his city. One was a nice, gentle one, and the other one was kind of old and grumpy. And he decided he was going to go to the nice, gentle one. And he goes to the rabbi and says, Rabbi, I want to become Jewish. And I want you to teach everything about Judaism while I'm standing on one leg. What does that mean? How long can you stand on one leg? I don't know how long I'm going to be able to, right? And that rabbi looked at him. He took a cane and a piece of wood and smacked him on the leg and said, get out of here. So he was determined, though, he was going to become Jewish. So he goes to the old rabbi. He says, Rabbi, I want you to teach me everything you know about Judaism while I'm standing on one leg. And the rabbi looked at him. And he said, Love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, and mind. He said that the word love encompasses the entire scripture. Now go and learn. And that's what we have to understand. 
you know, when, when we're asked to come and love, you know, the people say, well, you know, the whole word, the whole Torah is summed up in the word love, right? Because if you love your neighbor, you will not feel envy towards them, right? If you love your parents, you will honor and obey them. If you love the storekeeper, you will not steal. If you love the Lord your God, you will keep his Shabbat, right? You will have no other gods before him. The word love gives us the full meaning. And when we understand God's plan, we see the importance of it. Now, for those of you watching maybe right now on Facebook and you're looking for a, a, a nice, real calm message, this ain't it. <laughs> if you want a, a smiling message, go turn to the Olstein channel, right? <laughs> but if you want to hear a deeper word right now, that's what we're going to be going in. Because I looked at my notes and there's a lot of bold things. That's not a good sign. <laughs> You're not going to walk out here with a nice little fuzzy feeling on you. But we're going to have an understanding of the word of God. Because the person who loves God and loves his neighbor as himself will automatically be obeying all the other laws. It is the very commandment that leads to the real and abundant life. And that's what we're looking for, to understand God's plan. Verse 9, but if you show favoritism, you are committing what? Sin. Sin and are convicted by the Torah as what? Transgressors. Now, wait a second. This is the New Testament. Why is it talking about the Torah? Right? What we see here is the understanding that when you show favoritism, you're committing a sin, right? Because you're not being fair. Now, what does the scripture also tell us? We're going to be judged how what? We judge others, right? So why should God show us favor, you know, be, be nice to us if we're not nice to others, right? If we don't treat everyone as equals. Our society needs to learn this. You know, it doesn't matter what country you came from, the color of your skin, right? When you take all that off, when you look inside, we all look alike, don't we? There is no difference between us. Some of us might have darker skin. Some might have lighter skin. Some might have different shaped eyes, right? But when you take that all away and you look at the true us, which is what's inside, we're all the same. And that's what God looks at. We're all the same in his eyes. And we need to treat others that same way. Believers are to love people, not show partiality, not discriminate against some. Showing partiality is a sin, and it makes us a transgressor of all the law. But Rabbi, I only did do one I only committed one sin. Well, the scripture's clear, isn't it? You break the least of the commandments, you break broken all of them, right? Because who are you breaking? Who are you not putting your trust in? The Lord. And so God's calling us to be a better person, to rise above the crowd, and to show the world that he is God. Amen. Verse 10. For whoever keeps the whole Torah... But stumbles in one point has what? Become guilty of all. We need to understand this. How is it possible? How is it the fact that if I just tell a little lie, I've committed adultery, I've committed murder, right? And what does the scripture tell us about that? We who follow God or else we do not follow God. That's our choices. You either do or you don't. Amen. We're either going to commit our life to following God or we're not going to follow God. And how do we follow him? By reading his word. By obeying his commandments, right? 
Yeshua himself said, Do not think I have come to abolish the Torah of the prophets. I have not come to abolish, but really the word not it fulfilled can really be translated to the word perfection. Because is he not the truest perfection? And how does Yeshua do it? Through love. That's how he perfects the Torah. And that's how we can too. We need to be willing to follow the word of God. There is no such thing as subtracting the laws that one doesn't like and keeping the laws that, the, uh, that others do, right? Amen. We've had people try to do that. I'm going to keep eight of the commandments. I don't like two of them, so they're no longer commandments, right? Is that how God works? We need to be willing to follow and love him and obey his word. We can't pick and choose. This is not a Chinese restaurant, right, where you can pick one from column A and one from column B. Amen. It's all or nothing. But, Rabbi, I can't keep all the commandments. Yes, you can. I love it when people tell me that. They say, I can't keep them all. Which one can't you keep? Just show me one. Now, granted, there are ones that deal with the temple. Sometimes, if you know, there's some that deal with just men, some that deal with just women, right? But the commandments that you're supposed to keep, which one can't you do? Can't you not love the Lord your God? Amen. Can you honor your parents? Amen. Can you not commit adultery? Amen. Can you not steal? Can you not murder? Which ones can't you not do? It's that easy. Now, some of you, you know, some of your friends are saying, oh, but I can't give up ham. <laughs> yeah, you can. Amen. Right? <laughs> you can. It won't hurt you. It won't kill you. Matter of fact, you know, it, it probably will kill you if you don't. But if you, if you keep eating it, it will kill you. If you don't eat it, you'll be better, right? Amen. Does God not know what's good for us? Amen. You know, it's amazing. When you look at all these diets out there, <laughs> Most diets, if you look at most diets, they will tell you, 9 out of 10 tell you, stop eating pork. Yeah. Why? Because God knew what he was doing, right? Yeah. You know, there, there's ways to get around. You know, God knows. Why do we have circumcision on the eighth day? It's really simple. Science, it took science thousands of years to figure out why. But God knew from the very beginning, right? Because on the eighth day, there is a, a, a uh, something in the blood, I guess a vitamin in the blood. K. What is it? K, K. K something. K9, right? No, that's a dog. <laughs> vitamin K, right? <laughs> vitamin K. Got y'all laughing. That's good. You're paying attention. Vitamin K is in the body. And at that, that day, it's at the highest point it ever is. And that helps blood clots. See, God knows what he's doing, right? We have to follow his word. We can't be ashamed. We have to be willing to stand up for God. Because you know what? He stood up for us. And his son stood on the cross for our sins. So that we can be set free. That's the key that God is trying to show us here. Every law has been given by who? God, right? These, it wasn't given by Rabbi Scott. I didn't tell you that you can eat certain plants and not eat others, right? I'll hear people say, well, you know, we can eat anything we want. No, you can't. There are certain plants you cannot eat, right? I have people who say, well, we, you know, the, the word says it's, everything's clean, right? There are plants that if you eat it, what will happen to you? You'll die, right? Amen. So I guarantee you, you can't eat those plants. They ain't kosher. Real simple. Don't believe me? Eat some lunch. <laughs> right? I'll be, I'll, 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 I will be visiting you, but you will not know it. <laughs> but that's what we have to understand. We have to follow God's word. He has set it up for us to understand. Thus, to offend one, to, 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 thus, 
to offend in one point or to slip from one law makes one short of the goal. And what is the goal? To reach Messiah. The whole purpose of Torah is to point us to our salvation, to show us that we're not perfect, but that God loved us, there's that word again, right? So much that he sent his unbegotten son so that ever whoever believes in him will what? Not perish and be saved. Let's go on to verse 11. For the one who said, do not commit adultery, also said, do not commit murder. Now, if you do not commit adultery, but you commit murder, you have become a what? Transgressor of the Torah. And you know what? Even if you do the le not do the least one, you're still a transgressor. And what does that require? God made it very clear. When we sin, and guess what? We will sin, right? None of us are perfect. Some of you sinned on the way here. And you know who you are. Right? None of us are perfect. But we serve a loving God. And because we're not perfect, we better make sure we don't treat others the way we need to treat others the way we want to be treated, right? We need to be able to forgive. Here's the other thing we need to do, too. We need to be able to forget. That is, you know, it's easy to forgive. It's tough to forget. Here's the thing with God. When we ask God to forgive us of our sins, what happens to those sins? Do they get put under a, a cover for a season? So they come back you know, and he can say, well, on this date, you did this one. You did this one three times. No, what happens? They're wiped away. That's what we need to do when others commit against us we need to learn not only to forgive but to forget because if not we're going to judge and that's going to put us in a bad situation again you know we cannot sidestep from the god's direction one goes astray from the whole law of god and one becomes guilty of the whole law. Although he only broke one law, he is still guilty. He is still a transgressor. He has still broken God's law. Think about that. When we go against God's will, we're going against all of it, aren't we? When we're sitting there and telling God, I don't have to do this then there's trouble. But we got grace, brother, right? We hear that one all the time. I hear, we got grace. That's great. We have grace. We need grace. Trust me. But that doesn't give you the right to sin, does it? No. Grace is there for when we mess up and we repent and do what? Turn back to God. That's what the word repent means. You got to do a 180. We talked about this last week. If you're sinning, you're going away from God. But when you turn back to God and you truly love him, how do you show love to somebody? You obey, you honor them, right? You respect what they say. And that's what we see happening here. We need to obey God's word. We need to make sure that we can walk in his light. You know, I always joke around, I want to build an app. Because you're here in Judaism, they say, well, we, if you do good deeds, that's what's going to get you into heaven, right? So, so don't steal my idea because I, I have lawyers on my side and I will get you, <laughs> right? But I want to come up with an app. If you know how to do this, I want to, I want to have a, a good deed, bad deed app. <laughs> and what we're going to do is we're going to put all these deeds, you know, if you give you know, money to the poor, that's like two points. If you... Uh, you know, and, and we'll have this rating system, right? 
You know, if you tell your wife that you love her and that you actually listen to her, that's like 10 points, right? That's a big <laughs> one, right? So we're going to have this system set up. And here's the thing. You, so you put in all the things you did that day, and there'll be bad things too, like you, know, you cut someone off on 285. That's like a minus three, right? You know. You got up, you know, frustrated at the bank because the line was being like you were waiting at six at, at you know, at Disney World. The line was out the door, right? You get frustrated, right? That's like a minus four, right? So you put in everything you do that day, and at the end of the day, it's going to rate you, right? And you hope that your good deeds outweigh your bad deeds, right? But here's what we're going to do. This is how we're going to make money on it. Because you got to make money on apps, right? You, you, you th every app is free, but there's always this add-on, right? So what happens if, you're, if you have a really bad day and your bad deeds outweigh your good deeds? For 99 cents, you can get, like, bonus points, <laughs> right? That's how we can do it. And then everyone's going to get into heaven, right? That's not how it works, is it? I can make a lot of money on that, but that's not how God works. That's not the purpose. Because all we have to do is obey him. And then we're not going to want to do those things. Yeah, our flesh gets in the way. None of us are perfect. But that's why we have God. That's why we need God. And you know what? That's why we need his word. And we don't just need half the book. We need the whole thing, right? Amen. Have you ever read half a book? No. Try it sometime. <laughs> I, I, I want you to do it two, I want you to do two books, right? One book, just read and make them a, like a mystery, right? So the first, both of them have to be a mystery of who done it, right? And I want you to read half of one book, right? And then I want you to go to another book and read the other half of it and who done it, right? Now, at the end of the second book, you're going to know who did it, right? But you're not going to know why, right? Because you didn't read the first half of the book, Right? We can't just read part of the book, and you can't read the first part of a book and then the second part of another one and try to figure it out as well. See, the problem with Judaism is we're only reading half the book, yeah. right? We're reading the Torah and the prophets, which promise about a Messiah, but the unsaved Jews aren't reading the conclusion. And on the other end, the church is so involved with just the New Testament and the end results that they're forgetting where they came from. Amen. And so we have to understand where we come from so we know where we're going. Amen. See, you can't under, you're not going to understand all the situations if you don't know the whole story. And that's why God gave us his word. That's why we need to look and follow and keep his commandments. And when we do that with love, guess what? Good things happen, don't they? You know, we cannot build up a merit system with God by keeping most of the laws and, by, and, and be allowed to break, the few, uh, to break a few of the laws, right? We are not more acceptable to God because we kept most of the laws but only broke a few. Oh, Lord, well, I get most of your laws, Lord. I just didn't like some of them. They were inconvenient. <laughs> That's why most people break a lot God's word, right? It's, Lord, but... The lobster was on sale, <laughs> right? They were giving out a free sandwich, right? <laughs> Think about this, too. What's the cheapest meat you can find? Pork and ham, right? So if you're going to invite someone over to your house, don't you want to treat them like, hey, I really, if you're, you're inviting me over to your house, right, I expect filet mignon, right? I expect the good stuff. And what happens? Bring out the pork. This is what I think about you. Boom. The cheapest meat out there. That's what I got for you. Happy holidays. <laughs> right? Think about it. We need to bring God's love so that people can see it. We're not better than others just because we keep more of the laws either. Don't think, oh, well, we're better because we keep all these laws. Do you keep all of them? Well, no, there's a couple I don't keep. Well, then you're no better than the guy who doesn't keep any of them. 
right? We got to follow God's word. Showing partiality makes a person a terrible lawbreaker. The most serious of offenses imaginable. Thinking about that. We cannot show partiality. We got to be fair. Because we want God to be fair with us. Amen? Verse 12. Good news is we're almost done. Right? There was a thing on Facebook the other day. What does it mean when the rabbi says, and my final point is... And then 25 minutes later, he's still going. <laughs> Fortunately, I'm not like that, right? So speak and act as those who will what? Be judged according to, the, to a Torah that what? Gives freedom. Think about that. So many people have a mindset that the Torah gives death. But that's not what it does, does, does it? The Torah gives us freedom to live in God's life. Amen. Amen. The Torah gives us the freedom to walk with him, to be in his presence. What does God say? God can have what? What's one thing he cannot have in his presence? Sin, right? So if you have the least of sin, then what? You can't be in the presence of the God, right? But if you obey his commandments, if you obey his Torah, guess what? You're walking with the Lord. That's the best kind of person I want to walk with. Think about it. You can give the Lord a hand. I heard some claps going. Right? One of my favorite poems, and I'll tell you, it was a favorite poem of mine before I was even a believer. I didn't even understand it. It used to sit in my bathroom. I used to read it every morning, and it was called Footsteps of Faith. If you've ne how many of you have never heard that per before? I could probably give it to you from memory. I've read it so many times. But the story talks about a man who's walking on a beach. And before his eyes, he sees his life going by. And there was the good times and the bad times. And he noticed that when there was bad times in his life, that there was only one set of footprints. And he looked to the Lord and said, Lord, I thought you said that you would get us through those tough times. But when I look in the sand looking back on my life, I only see two sets of footprints during the good times. But in the hard times, there's only one set. And that's when the Lord looked at him and said, Son, during those times, I was carrying you. That's what we have to remember. That's how much our God loves us. He loves you so much. You and He knows the number of hairs on your head. With Rabbi Renee, that was a lot easier to count than mine. <laughs> right? He knows you. <laughs> Love you, brother. <laughs> He loves you so much. <laughs> he loves you so much that he knew you before you, while you were still in your mother's womb. That's how important you are to God. Don't think he doesn't know who you are. He has your number. He's got you. He's watching there. And he's with you. Because our God is a loving God. And that's why we need to focus in on that. I want to read the last verse. For judgment is merciless to the one who does not show mercy. Mercy triumphs over judgment. There are two things that should stir us to love and care for all people. Showing no favoritism whatsoever. The first is that we shall face the judgment of God. How many of y'all are ready for that? If you were to meet your maker right now, would you be happy? Would you be embarrassed? Would you be ashamed? Would you be able to go there and praise him? 
and let him say to you, Welcome, good and faithful servant. What we speak, what we act, how we treat other people, when we stand before God and give account for what we have done, we need to be careful, don't we? We need to make sure we're treating people like God, that, like we want God to treat us. Second and the last point. We shall receive the reciprocal reward for our behavior. God is going to treat us exactly as we have treated others. Some of you are going, Rabbi, I have some explaining to do. Right? God's going to treat us the same way we've treated others. If we have shown mercy, then he will show mercy to us. If we have not shown mercy, then he will not show mercy to us. We need to come overcome the temptations and the trials that face us. And we must not show partiality. Because one day, we're going to be before our maker. And we've got to be able to look at him and say, Lord, I love you, and I followed your word. That's what he's calling us to do. We need to get involved. We need to get deeper into his word. It's not enough of what we talked about this last week. We can't just be a sayer of the word. We need to be a what? Doer. Jacob was very clear with what he was saying here. This book is written by the half-brother of Yeshua. He understood God's plan. But it wasn't only until after Yeshua's death and resurrection. See, that's what the amazing... People forget about that. He wasn't on right, right away, was he? But man, when the word of God touches you and those scales come off your eyes, watch out. And that's what we see taking place. When Yeshua was asked, what is the greatest of all the commandments? He didn't pick one of the top ten. He picked 419. Just kidding. I don't know what number it is. <laughs> but it sounded, some of you were like, wow, that's amazing. Rabbi knew the exact number. So I had to be honest, right? <laughs> to love God with our heart, soul, and mind. And to love our neighbor as ourselves. Amen. Now go and learn the rest. Amen? Give the Lord a hand. Amen? I want everyone to bow your head and close your eyes. Because it's not enough to just be a doer of the word. We need to have the word inside of us. If you're watching online, if you're watching on Facebook, if you watch on Apple TV or one of the other, Roku or Yuku or Huku, wherever you're watching us, if it's live or archived, and you're ready to say yes to him, all you need to do is contact us, and we will pray with you that prayer of salvation. But if you're here in the congregation right now, and you're ready to say yes to him, all you need to do is raise your hand and we'll say a simple prayer. Is there anyone? Anyone at all? And Abba Father, as we come before you right now, Lord, let us not judge others. And Lord, let us remember that how we treat others is how you will treat us. Lord, make us into a better being for you. Lord, we want to be on your side, not against you. Lord, we thank you for your son, Yeshua. 
Thank you for the love you've shown us. And Lord, we want to show that love right back to you. We ask this in your Son, Yeshua's precious name. And everyone said...